Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Introduction to Business 30. Again, this is the Achieving World Class Operations module, and this is Lesson 5. We're going to look at the topic of scheduling in this lesson. The overview of this lesson involves three main topics that we're going to look at. Number one, we're going to explore a definition of scheduling. Number two, we're going to examine the issue of job sequencing. And number three, we're going to look at priority rules. In other words, different rules that we can follow to sequence jobs that are on our to-do list. This is a topic of real importance to operations management, as we'll go through in the following slides. Let's begin with the definition of scheduling. Again, this would be more like a, a textbook definition that you would see in an operations management textbook. This is, um, I think, a vital way for us to look at scheduling because it can tie in different aspects on the resources that an organization uses to accomplish its overall objectives. So the definition that I've put up in the PowerPoint notes would be that it's the assignment of resources to accomplish the tasks of an organization. Now you might think of that in terms of different situations where you are, uh, where you are assigning resources to accomplish the tasks that the organization is trying to deliver. If you're looking at scheduling and assignment of resources, it can involve the assignment of workers to shifts. So at a, at a retail store, which worker is going to work from 9 in the morning till 6 p.m. in the evening? Uh, which set of workers will, will work from noon till 8 p.m. and so on? You, you could look at flight crews to airplanes. So which flight, flight crew is going to fly tomorrow's flight from Saskatoon to Toronto? You could look at assigning surgeries to surgical blocks. And that's actually a very important and crucial decision that's made in healthcare. So on Friday morning, should they do orthopedic surgeries? Or should they do other type of surgeries that would uh, be equally important for that organization? Finally, you could look at sports league games certain days of the week. So should the Toronto Maple Leafs play the Montreal Canadiens next Saturday evening, for example? What you're trying to do in scheduling is to assign resources to accomplishing the overall tasks that the organization is trying to deliver. Another way of looking at scheduling is that it involves the translation of capacity decisions into job sequences. In other words, what sequence in which should you do jobs? And again, what are the specific assignments of materials, machinery, or personnel to meet the needs of the organization? I like this definition because it goes back to the very first um, set of topics we looked at in the operations management module. Remember we looked at inputs, outputs, and the question mark in the middle? We discussed that operations management involves a transformation of inputs into outputs to produce something of value for your customers or clients. Scheduling is a vital transformation process in which organizations take inputs and then with that information produce outputs on the other end. The overall objective in scheduling is in essence to optimize your resource usage. Your resources could be the workers in your organization, the staff that you have. It could be your flight crews if you're in an airline. Uh, it could be your surgical teams or your surgeries if you're a hospital. It could be the teams in your sports league if you're running a professional sports league. What you're trying to do is optimize the use of your resources to meet those overall organizational needs. Again, if you were um, an operations man manager at a, um, at a retail store, you wouldn't want a situation in which you had an overabundance of workers in the slow time and then fewer workers than you would need in the peak times. You would want to optimize your resource usage so it meets the needs of your organization so that you're providing the best service possible so you don't have an overabundance of workers when you don't need them and then too few workers when the need is really uh, excessive for, for workers. Let's turn our attention to looking at sequencing of jobs. Now this is an important vital aspect of scheduling. Uh, you can look at it in, in this perspective that what you're doing is you're taking tasks or activities or jobs you're taking things that are on your to-do list and you're trying to determine in what order you should do those jobs. Now this might really relate to you as high school students because I imagine that you've got a lot of things on your to-do list from day to day. Uh, you might have um, a particular set of assignments that you're working on in your um, high school. Maybe you have um, a calculus exam, uh, maybe a social studies project, a history paper, 
Uh, you've got a science experiment. So you've got all these different jobs or activities on your to-do list. And you want to know uh, maybe in what order you should do those jobs in. Should you do um, the, the shortest one first? Should you do the longest one first? In what order uh, should you do them? And does it really make sense? Uh, does, does it really add value to look at the sequencing of those jobs? So what we're going to do is we're going to explore an interesting example. We're going to begin with what are known as priority rules. A priority rule is something that helps us to determine the order or priority in which we should do those jobs. Again, it's a very simple rule that's established to help you allocate your resources to the work, to the jobs that are on your to-do list. Again, what you're doing here is you're trying to identify the sequence in which you should do those jobs. So let's look at different priority rules that we have. These are common priority rules that are used in operations management practice. One of the rules we have is called shortest processing time, which we label as SPT. In a shortest processing time priority rule, you tackle the shortest job first. So if you've got a whole bunch of jobs in your to-do list, you do the shortest one first. Earliest due date, which is abbreviated EDD, in that particular case, what you do is you tackle the job first that has the earliest due date. So if you have a whole bunch of jobs in your to-do list, you look at which one has the earliest due date. And the due date is the date by which it needs to be done. So you tackle the, early, the one with the earliest due date first. Another priority rule is called longest processing time, or LPT, and it's the exact opposite of SPT. Under the LPT priority rule, you do the longest job first. So here's an example. Suppose you had five jobs on your to-do list. Again, these jobs could be, if you're a high school student, it could be um, studying for an exam, preparing a paper, uh, doing a report for a science class. Um, it could be a number of things that you have on your to-do list. And let's suppose that each one of these jobs has a processing time, which we're going to measure in days, and a due date, which we'll also measure in days. That due date represents the, date, the days from today in which that job is due. So let's look at the uh, table here. We have five jobs in the to-do list. The jobs are labeled A, B, C, D, and E. Each one of those jobs has a processing time and a due date. For example, job A takes five days to do, and it's due nine days from now. Job C takes seven days to do. It's due 14 days from now. Again, each one of those jobs has a processing time measured in days and a due date, which is the number of days from today in which that job must be done. So if you, look at, if you were to look at determining the job sequences, suppose you did SPT. Under SPT, you do the shortest jobs first. And the sequence here would be B, A, D, C, E. Now how do we get that? Well, let's go back to the example. If you look in this particular case, if you do the shortest jobs first, so you want to look at that middle column, and basically pick the smallest processing time and do that job first. The smallest processing time is three days for job B, so you do that one first. It's followed by job A, because it has a five-day processing time, then D, which has six days, then C at seven, and finally E at 11. So B, A, D, C, E. For earliest due date, you look at the due dates. In other words, you tackle the job first that has the earliest due date. The sequence here would be B, A, C, D, E. Let's look at how we got that. In this example now, we're going to look at the rightmost column under due date, and we're going to see which job has, this, has the earliest due date. In other words, the smallest number in that rightmost column. Job B has the earliest due date, day 5. So we'll do B first, followed by A, because it's due in, in 9 days, then C, which is 14, then D, which is due 20 days from now, and finally job E, which is due 25 days from now. So B, A, C, D, E. The longest processing time, LPT, is the longest job first. Now the easy way to get this one is to simply look at SPT and flip it around, because LPT is the exact opposite or reverse of SPT. So under LPT, it would be E, C, D, A, B. Again, it's the exact reverse order of what we had with SPT above. 
So how do you evaluate the job sequences? How do you determine how good they are? It's a rather straightforward uh, measure to be able to determine the job sequence. But how do you identify how good those job sequences are? Well, there's a number of things you can evaluate. And this is what, actually what real operations management uh, analysts would do. Uh, they would compute a number of different measures, and here's three of them. Now, we're not going to go into detail on how these are calculated, but I simply wanted to give you an idea of the different measures that are available to help you evaluate job sequences. You could look at the average completion time. In other words, when were the jobs done? You could look at the average number of jobs in your to-do list. In other words, how many things are on your plate waiting to be done. You could look at the average job lateness, because some jobs may be late because they um, may not be done prior to their due date. So those are things you can do and measures you can evaluate to determine how good your job sequence is. Well, if you look at comparing the different priority rules, it turns out that no one rule is the overall best. Different rules work on, in different situations. In other words, different rules work really well in some situations and work poorly in others. So there's no one overall rule that is the overall best rule that you ought to follow. However, SPT, shortest processing time, has been identified to be a really good scheduling rule. And maybe this is a lot of, us, a lot of the ways that we tend to look at our work. I don't know if, if you're like me, if I've got a lot of things on my to-do list, I tend to, do, I tend to tick off the shortest ones first because there's a sense of psychological satisfaction when you see a lot of things disappearing off your to-do list. So SPT is good because it does get jobs off of the to-do list rather quickly. The one drawback or disadvantage is that it might push a longer duration job further back in your to-do list. Again, because it's tackling the little jobs, the shortest jobs, first. EDD, earliest due date, actually is a, is a good rule if you want to reduce average job lateness. So if, if you want to make sure that you're really reducing your overall lateness, then you would want to use the EDD priority rule, earliest due date. Finally, LPT, longest processing time, actually not a really good rule at all. Um, again, the longest processing time rule will spend a lot of time at the beginning of the schedule on a single job because it's going to tackle the longest ones first. Meanwhile, the other jobs spend a whole lot of time waiting. So this rule ends up being one that probably not as attractive as SPT, shortest processing time, or earliest due date, EDD. Well, thank you everybody for listening for, uh, to lesson five, dealing with scheduling. We'll see you again in lesson six. Have a good day.